<laughs> oh yeah, boy. Hi. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Cobalt B, because as you guys can see, Cobalt B has a release date. She is going to be the upcoming new Simulacrum, released on M6 October. So thank you to, uh, who is this? This is uh, the Deutschland people. Thank you, Tower of Fantasy, Deutschland, Germany, for this trailer over here, as well as the release date. But I do want to focus more about like the viability of Cobalt B in the current state of the global meta. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh man, Cobalt B, freaking trash, unless you get like a six star. All of these different preconceptions about the Cobalt B, about how exactly she performs. I want to talk about them today and just from a theoretical level. Because as we know, I don't have access to the test server. So uh, please, please, Tower of Fantasy, give me that test server, boy. And so, my guys, today I am not going to be a React YouTuber. I don't really feel like watching through this trailer. And okay, you know, I will show you guys a little bit in terms of her gameplay. Look at that freaking hottie. Anyway, so the TLDR is that she uses a massive shotgun or revolver, which, you know, those are two kind of two different things, but they're using it interchangeably. And please don't be misinformed by this part over here where she is breaking shields. She is not exactly a breaker. That is, um, that is a very good scenario. But yeah, I'll drop the link to this one down in the description below. With that being said, let's talk about Cobalt B, her CN state, and how I feel like she is going to fit in with the global meta. So let's start off with what Cobalt B does. So as you can see over here, she is a DPS resonance which means that if you combine her with the king you can get that plus 40 percent attack buff in the co-op matches she is indeed of the flame element and as you can see shatter 6.5 it's okay but you're not really going to be relying on her to do the shatter especially when you do have the likes of huma as well as king however what you will notice is that she has a relatively high charge at 10. now i do believe that this matches with the huma charge also at 10 so i believe at this point in time huma's spin skill does take priority over Cobalt in her normal state. Moving on, we do have the attack, health, crit, substats. However, as you guys know, the crit of these weapons, they give like 400 or 500 crit, whereas a freaking pair of gloves can potentially give you up to 4k crit. A pair of booties somehow can also give you 4k crit, which is about 10 times more than a freaking weapon. Why that happens, I don't freaking know. But let's move on to the weapon effects, in which we do have flame over here. So flame essentially has two functions. One is a damage over time, 58% of attack every second. But the second is actually what if you play League of Legends is your grievous wounds, right? The ignited targets receive 50% efficacy from healing. And so here is where we're going to talk about the first uh, alleged change, you know, in the grassroots movements. This is just what I've been hearing, you know, from the rumors. Similar to how Frigg got Frost Resonance and Claudia got the physical resonance, we do anticipate that Cobalt B is going to be arriving with the Flame Resonance. So what you can expect based on these rumors is that she is going to be getting a 15% attack buff to all Flame units, similar to this, and a 25% flame resistance. Now, that is going to actually really bring out the question because Ruby is allegedly after Cobalt B. I think we're finally going to get our question answered as to, well, if Cobalt B is going to get the flame resonance, if Frigg is going to get frost, if Claudia over here is going to get physical, then what is going to happen to the existing units that actually previously on CN had the flame resonances, such as Ruby, such as Yosaki? To be honest, I don't have the answer to that. But if I were the devs, there are kind of two pathways that I could take. The first is to give Ruby the same version of the Cobalt B buff, the Flame Resonance, and the second would be to actually remove it altogether. I don't think that Ruby is going to be getting the higher tier Flame buff. So as you can see over here, Flame attack by 20% and Resistance by 40%. To be honest, and remember, this is purely a guess, but I do think that they're just going to give that nerfed version to Ruby and call it a day. This is kind of good and kind of bad because it means that we actually have options. In my opinion, I think it's a good thing. However, with that being said, let's move back to Cobalt B and I want to talk about the constellations in a second because these are essentially the most important parts. However, they are related to the skills themselves. So I'm not going to talk about any of these because these are kind of like your generic uh, jump attack, dodge attack, air attack. What I am going to talk about is this skill over here, which is barrage. Both the weapon skill as well as the discharge, barrage and multiple grenade. You can see they are essentially like your damage and that is kind of it. She is most certainly a DPS unit flat DPS at this point. There is indeed a little bit of crowd control over here on the multiple grenade where you can get a knock up effect. However, by and large, she is just going to be like doing pew pew damage, kind of like your Samir, right? You just do flat damage, you're doing damage, and that's kind of all you do. Moving back through some of these skills over here, some of these more like basic skills, what you are going to notice is that this follows that trend. So there is no burn, there is no damage over time. 
and burn and damage over time is really the way that Cobalt is being used in CN. Because when I come up to the top, back over to the star advancements over here, what you are going to notice is that there is going to be a feature called Ionic Burn. Ionic Burn at three stars, Ionic Burn at five stars, in which the damage is increased. And then we also get burning effect on the skill barrage at C6. Now, let me go through each of these one by one. But what I'm trying to tell you is that generally speaking on the CN server, the philosophy that they have adopted for the Cobalt team is that if you don't use the burns from the advancements over here, she is essentially not going to be as competitive as the other teams. And a massive reason for this is because of the Lin skill. So as you can see over here, when paired with two flame weapons, Moonlight Realm is transformed into blah, blah, blah. But the effect is that any burn effects applied will have their duration extend by four seconds and increase flame damage to shielded targets by 15%. Now, this is really, really good because if I come back to Cobalt B over here, what you will see is deal 90% of attack as flame damage every second for 10 seconds. And if you add four seconds to that with the Lin skill over here, what it means is that she has essentially plus four seconds on the uptime. So that is four times 90% damage. You have just gained 360% attack with a bleed or oh, burn, sorry. And so yeah, let's walk through each of these advancements and see how exactly they contribute to this philosophy of burn cobalt. And so starting off with the first star advancement, when using the weapon skill barrage, add 2% of the enemy max HP as bonus damage up to 200% of attack. Now, there are a couple of interpretations of this advancement because some people have claimed that this actually counts as a burn, whilst some other CM players have claimed that it does not actually count as a burn. And the reason for this confusion is because generally speaking, when people have pulled for Cobalt, they have gone for Cobalt 6 star. And on top of that, if I come over to the banner schedule, you will see that Cobalt B was added to the standard banner. What that means is that it was very easy to get her to C6. So anybody that uses Cobalt B, generally speaking, has her at C6. Not very much C1 enjoyers, so it's not very clear whether this is actually a burn or not. I suspect it's not a burn, there is nothing explicitly stating it is a burn over here, but it could be a source of it. Moving through to her three star advancement over here, using the skill or dodge attack on burning targets, so the target must already be burning, will additionally apply Ionic Burn, dealing 90% of attack as flame damage every second for 10 seconds. Now, what will determine the feasibility of this is if the one star advancement burns. So if we assume that it doesn't burn, then this is actually not exactly gonna be that useful. But if the one star actually does indeed count as a burn, then this will actually be really, really freaking good. Moving on to the five star advancement over here. Ionic burn damage increased to 140% and dodge attacks from any weapon will refresh the burn's duration. Now, that is fantastic. However, I actually forgot to mention something and that is for the global version. This. 140% is actually going to be nerfed, you know, according to the rumors, to 90% from 140. And this one over here is actually also going to be nerfed from 90% down to 60%. Coming back to the five star advancement over here, this is essentially making your ionic burn stronger. If you don't have anything burning, you can't apply ionic burn. So that is why the C6 is going to be required because the skill barrage has a burning effect. So that is your E or your one skill depending on your keybinds and this is gonna last for 15 seconds. So what I am saying is that only if there is no burn on the one star, only if you have the six star can you actually apply burns. And then only when you apply burn can you then apply ionic burn, which is from your three star and your five star. Now. <laughs> That honestly sounds like really, really freaking trash, right? The only other alternative to getting burns is with the Cobalt B matrices. Now, this is the China exclusive one, and I believe we also get a nerfed version of this one where dodge attacks add burn to the target, and therefore you can trigger these ones over here. However, I do think that the two piece set effect, this guy over here, is being moved over to the four piece set. Now, I don't know, man, that's, that's kind of cringe if true. And the reason that it's cringe is because that means the barrier to get more burns is gonna be even higher. You need the four piece set or you need the cobalt at the six star. Oh boy. And so that is why I am gonna say we cannot play cobalt like a burner, especially for like the vast majority of players, like 90 to 95% of you lower spenders, there's a pretty fat chance that you're not gonna be getting cobalt B at six stars, especially until she gets to the standard banner. And so guys, to kind of wrap that up, back to the six star over here, because we didn't really talk about it, but the TLDR is that your skill barrage now grants burn, in which you can now trigger the ionic burn from the three and the five stars. And the good thing about this six 
Star is that you can also dodge and reduce the cooldown of Barrage by four seconds once every 1.5 seconds. Now, Barrage has a massive, massive cooldown at 60 seconds over here. So what that means is that the more you dodge, the lower the cooldown of Barrage, and therefore the more dots that you can actually apply. Whilst that is a pretty good recap on Cobalt B meta on the CN version, let's talk a little bit more about Global and how she could perform. So as we already know, especially at low spender, at like the lowest stars, she is most certainly gonna be like your flat attacker, like your Samir just doing the pew pew pew, or your Meryl doing the spin to win. No dot damage, we're not gonna take that into consideration. Unfortunately, again, the barrier to entry for the burns and the ionic burns is just way too high. This is called me coping with a Cobalt C0. And <laughs> I've done this before. So let's have a look at this one over here. Let's start doing some team building. And so let's start off with the Cobalt B over here. To activate the flame resonance, we need at least either King, Zero, or Huma. If we go with King, it is gonna give us the attack resonance, and he is also gonna give us some shield shattering capabilities. On the other hand, if we go with the Huma, then that is also gonna give us the flame resonance. However, we are kind of locked to either the balanced or the fortitude traits. For argument's sake, I'm gonna assume that King does the most DPS and so Cobalt plus King are going to be the premier fire core. Now from here there are a couple of different things we can do. We could add the Huma in and use like that off field damage over time with the axe, leave the flame on the ground kind of thing, burn burn burn. However the first criticism to this team over here is that there is a little bit too much shattering and not enough damage. I would actually potentially disagree with that and say that both King and Huma, especially at C1, bring an insane amount of shatter and damage. And so it's for that reason that I think that the Cobalt B, King, and Huma team, this is very, very viable. At Cobalt B, C0, King, C1, and Huma, C1. Now, the other option is to actually have one of the two shield breakers. So let's say King, for example, and then have a damage support in the form of Tsubasa, C1 at least, to get that 15% buff, or the C5 or C6, which brings it up to 25% buff. And so what this means is that you're gonna be doing all of your damage with the Cobalt B, B and the King and only swapping into the Tsubasa to do that damage buff. The same kind of story goes for the Claudia over here. So if I go Claudia up here and Tsubasa in there, Claudia would come in only at C1 where she gives the all damage buff 24% over three skill uses. And so this team over here is viable. This one with Tsubasa is also viable. This one with King out and Huma is also viable. This would actually give you attack resonance, which is fantastic. And with the Tsubasa out and Claudia in, also certainly viable as well. Me personally, from a damage meta point of view, I think that this is probably gonna be the highest DPS for fire team that one or potentially with the Huma as well. But as you guys can tell, we do have a zero over here and zero unfortunately is a support, but but zero, the support and all supports in the game, their heals actually depend on attack. And if Cobalt B gives you plus 15% attack, that means that your healing is gonna go even higher. So I think that this is actually a pretty good idea. Combine that with the Coco Ritza and therefore you have a little bit more healing in your zero if you do have like the necessary stuff. And so with that, let's start talking about the other ones down here, the units that I did not even consider. Crow, because he is a Thunder DPS, a Vault DPS, and so he just does not fit in here, where Cobalt is the main DPS, or potentially even your King, or for some of you um, Huma simps, Huma as well. The same story unfortunately goes for Frigg as well. Shudo is a Shield Breaker, however, she is of the physical element, and so therefore we do not need any more Shield Breaking. We got King and Huma. The rationale for Shudo can also be applied to Meryl. Meryl, you, you do not need any more Shatter. Samir, the same rationale that is for Crow and Frigg, and Nemesis is a healer is Vault. She literally has nothing to do with this team over here unless you actually strictly need healing. Then maybe you could run something like that. Or you could run something like uh, like that. Or you could run something like that. If you do need some type of healing in your solo PvE endeavors. And so guys, that's essentially the theoretical teams that I would be using if you were to try cope with a Cobalt B at C0 or potentially C1 or something. I would personally, I'd be looking at something like this or something like this simply because those are the characters that I have. And yes, I did not consider any of these upcoming characters upcoming from the CN server simply because they are too far away. However, if Ruby comes along pretty fast, then maybe Ruby can actually replace the King or the Huma, or maybe she is the third one over here. But unfortunately, I don't know when Ruby is gonna come. Some theorize that Ruby might come after Cobalt B. However, some others are saying, man, Cobalt B is flame, Ruby is flame. There's no way that they would do flame and flame back to back. So therefore, Lin is gonna come next. 
I don't know. I, I think that's pretty major copium. I do think that there is a pretty good chance that they will back to back the flame, the cobalt B into the ruby. However, with that, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And so I did want to pass on the question to you guys. Are you going to be going for the cobalt B? And if you are going for cobalt B, how many advancements are you going to go for? Personally, I'm going to be going for a C0 cobalt B because I like to cope like I did with the Claudia. That didn't work for those of you who did watch the video. And so my guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up dropping a comment, I would really appreciate that. If you did enjoy this video or found it kind of helpful, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, or turning on that notification bell. However, as your girl Cobalt B once said, oh, ho, ho, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.